Welcome to the Picture This Photography Podcast. And today we're going to be answering your questions. We told you to ask us any question uh, and you had some good ones, including when and if we're gonna bring back our Thursday night photo critique show. We got a lot about that. So we will definitely be answering that question. As well as how we met. But first a word from our sponsor Squarespace. Whether you need your own website or store or portfolio for your photos, you can make it happen with Squarespace. We both have them. We have many of them actually. And they're really easy to use and they make your photos look great. So if you want to try it for absolutely free and save 10% if you decide to buy it, you can go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, try it for the 14 days, put your pictures in there, see what they look like. And if you decide you'd like to buy it, get 10% off with the coupon code Chelsea. And the link is down in the description below. You can have a site up in like 10 minutes. Yeah, you can. First question, when will you bring back Tony and Chelsea live. I, I'm actually going to push this one to you, Tony, because you killed Tony and Chelsea live. <laughs> Do not say that. You did. It was you. Okay. So if you don't know, up until the beginning of this year, every Thursday we did a live show where we would review people's photos. Yeah. And at first, this was a really popular feature on our channel. And as time went on, it started to actually like lose us a lot of subscribers the views started going down and down and down. Yeah. And we started mixing in news pieces to try to get people to watch it, but then they would watch it for the news and then they wouldn't be happy with the hour and a half long review of photos. And so again, people were dissatisfied. We had to switch our sponsorship over to just the news pieces. So the yeah. live show no longer had a sponsor. And then to top things off, at the beginning of the year, the system just broke. We did a live show and it just, whatever reasons, refused to stream and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. Yeah. And then the pandemic hit and we could no longer have somebody here in person switching cameras. And so we just didn't stop. We just stopped doing it. That's true. But I've been asking you about bringing it back. We've talked about bringing it back on a separate channel or maybe just bringing it back for the people in our photo group. We have a photo group on Facebook, but um, we do miss it. Yeah. It's I miss so connecting. I miss connecting with people. Yeah. I miss actually seeing people's photos because that kind of tells me what people are struggling with and what we can make tutorials yeah. on. And, and I do miss that deeper connection. I do want to bring it back. I do think we'll have to put it on a separate channel because it was killing our channel. <laughs> it's yeah. just the way the YouTube works. We just don't get to make the content we don't want to. Not so all the time, no. we have a best shot of 2020 photo review coming up in the next week. And I'm going to get something working. I don't know how it's going to work, but... I'm going to make something stream, and it's going to be just the two of Remember us. Remember the here. good old days of the live show, though? Like, it was like one of the only ones on YouTube. It was so novel. Yeah. Like, that was really exciting. I did, uh, it was nice being part of, like, people's A schedule. cool thing. It was a cool thing. Okay. I got these questions over and over again, and the sum of it is AI is here. Things like the luminar sky is swapping out the skies in landscape photography. Yeah. Um, the autofocus system in the new Canon R5 is so good that it takes all the challenge of wildlife photography away. What is going to happen? Uh, is this taking away from photography? Is it making it less exciting or more exciting? And I've been at this photography game long enough that I've kind of seen this happen over and over and over again. Like I, I wasn't there in the 50s and 60s when auto exposure first came around, but I know people were saying this is ruining photography because now anybody can get an ex a photo that is properly exposed, where is the challenge? Yeah. And you have to kind of look at the person asking the question, like why would you think that the challenge of photography was just getting the exposure right or getting people in focus or getting a nice sky? Like to me, that's all photography 101 stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Learn how to focus things properly, get it exposed properly, blue hour, golden hour, go out a few times to get a nice sky. If that is taking away everything you like about photography, then you need to set your sights a little higher. Like, Not even higher, maybe just, the, maybe, you know, the bullseye move is, moves, maybe it's a moving target where like at one time having access to photographic equipment was the challenge. It was expensive, mm -hmm. it wasn't common. At another time, it would have been the fact that you would have had to hone these more technical techniques um, focusing or figuring out how to develop film. And so there's been an moving targets of what the challenge was in photography. It, it might be editing. It might be post-processing in the future. It might be storytelling. Um, it might just be being able to figure out new interesting compositions and places. And so 
that's something we have to figure out. I don't think it ruins photography. I think it just changes it. No. If, if you want to auto ex manually expose stuff and manually focus and keep it basic, you can do that. But you're not going to get adoration just for those things. Yeah. Instead, you'll need to like tell great stories, figure out new techniques. And yeah, it continues to get more challenging. I also think there are photographers where that's not the point of their work. Um, they, like their photos are just showing something different. Replacing the sky isn't going to make it any better or worse. So right. um, maybe people will get over that sensational photography that just always looks like some heavenly, uh, what was that painter, Thomas Kincaid scene. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll move back to something more like gritty and real. So I don't know. We'll see where it takes us. Jimbo Jim Bobson asks, what do you think about analog film and do you ever still shoot it? I, you, I, a couple of years ago, I was shooting analog constantly because I loved the feel of the cameras. What I found out what happened was I would shoot rolls of film and then nothing would ever happen with the film. Yeah. And as a result, I wasn't getting that whole cycle and I, I stopped using it. Yeah, I was shooting it a few years ago. I had access to a dark room, and I like that whole start to finish process of developing my own film and the quiet of the dark room. And then once I didn't have access to that anymore, I was doing like a, a film develop back, a Polaroid back on a film camera. And then I just haven't done it in a while. So I do like it. It's just very time consuming and Maybe manual film it. cameras are still my favorite photographic process. I love even just the manual advancing, like click, 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 and the shutters. <laughs> and that's what's how it's fun to take pictures for me. Yeah. But then everything after that sucks. <laughs> I wish somebody would actually make a digital you don't enjoy for like, film cameras. You don't enjoy developing your own film? No. Do no? not like that part at all. Oh, I don't I even like, like packing it up and shipping it off to darkroom.com. I, oh. like, I just want my pictures. I like that part. I like when it like comes out in the pan. It's like magic. Um, this Alan, is a provocative question. Oh, what's your favorite thing about each other and your biggest pet peeves? All right, you go first. Okay. My favorite thing is that Chelsea is down. If I have a crazy idea, she's down. She's there. She's always by my side. She's like my partner in crime. And my biggest pet peeve is that uh, Chelsea often simply doesn't believe in herself when she should. And she'll True. take a project, she'll even like get it 90% of the way there and then she'll be like, it's not good enough, people are gonna be mean. And then it, it just, it'll never see the light of day. When it was like good quality stuff, whether it's a video or a still, you just, you, you get timid at that last second. That's true, I'm a perfectionist and you've been really good at pushing me through that. Um, my favorite thing about you is that you're very like supportive of everyone. Um, I just see you believing that there's something good in everyone all the time. You never meet someone, assume you're smarter than them. You're just like, what do you know? You know, what can we talk about? And you're always finding the good in other people. And my biggest pet peeve is um, when you don't put the little door open for the steam shower. <laughs> okay. Saeed says, the photography gods are enraged and demand a sacrifice. Which camera brand do you sacrifice to appease them? The bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the blessing. Okay, I think I figured this one out. The camera company that put a camera on the moon. It's a big deal, right? You're gonna... Very prestigious name, Hasselblad. I'm sacrificing Hasselblad. Honestly, DJI owns them now. They're just like, they just, the name has been just put on mediocre drones to try to charge Ooh. a higher price to them but hopefully the gods haven't figured that out yet hopefully the gods ha just still think of Hasselblad as being this like very prestigious brand and none of no photographer is going to miss them <laughs> in 2020. What about you? All right. Like Nikon because you hate Nikon. <laughs> do people have people been saying that? I love Nikon. All right I'm gonna do Canon Whoa. <laughs> because I think um, they're at the top of their game, and I think that would just cause chaos. And if people knew I did that, oh, I would really be effing with people. I'd be like, you made me do it! <laughs> Chelsea, Cannon people were the only people not mad at you. And now you just ruined that. Now yep. everyone on the planet is mad at you. <laughs> Whatever, I'm leaning into it. Darren James asks, what do you think drives all the venom that you two get as popular camera YouTube personalities? Oh, I don't know. I think everybody gets it. Every single YouTuber I've talked to gets it. And um, 
have you ever wondered like if it's you like oh definitely like, I'm just like I don't know maybe I'm not likable maybe uh, maybe I'm annoying maybe there's a reason people should hate me like I've definitely thought that and I'm like no that seems fake <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm, <great. laughs> I'm just kidding but no I think everybody gets it and um, I also think it depends on what's going on in people's personal lives like 2020 has been terrible and that directly correlates to the type of comments we're getting like people are who they're mad they're miserable it is worse in 2020 I, I think the biggest factors aren't you as an individual but rather just longevity and like long-term popularity if you're popular for a long time whether you're in politics or music or YouTube cameras yeah. there's going to be an increasingly large number of people who hate you it's inevitable like name a famous politician who doesn't have a large number of people who hate them you know or musician or actor or director you know what made me feel like better like people hate Ken Rockwell and he's the nicest human like I've met him a few times and you will never meet a more upbeat positive nice to everyone rosy cheeked pure human on this earth and people are so mean to him so I'm like first of all I guess that makes me feel worse but also it has nothing to do with the person what do you say like P mode was for pro now everyone wants to ruin his career forever yeah like 12 years ago he said yeah. that and that's still what people remember there's one thing he said like 12 years ago and by the way totally reasonable statement if you think it's not reasonable it's because you haven't read what he wrote yes what he wrote like I went back and read the blog and I was like oh there's people just hate him because they're mean or then like Peter McKinnon came along seems like the nicest guy I haven't met him but seems super nice P Peter McKinnon seems so nice he's talented he's hard-working like he's cool like I would be friends with him he looks awesome and when I saw how um, jealous people were in the industry like he like skyrocketed and like claws came out mm -hmm. I've been at this longer oh Peter McKinnon any single opportunity they had to judge him or undermine him or you know they took it and so you see that and, and I mean you do take it personally but logically you know you can't because no matter who you are what you're doing people will be horrible all right what does Brendan say do you ever regret committing yourself to something in a video? Yes. Like, here's a video. In our next video, we'll cover how to do this. <laughs> I do this all the time. I feel so bad because I will tease my next video and I will mean it sincerely. Yeah. And then you get lazy or what? Yeah, I'm just, I just get lazy. <laughs> no, because something else comes up. Like recently, I, I talked about how to set wireless headphones for monitoring your video camera. And I wanted to test it out with a bunch of new Bluetooth headphones also. I ordered all those headphones. I had everything lined up to do it. But then, I don't know, it's the end of the month and we have to do some sponsored videos yeah. or something else inevitable. Some new camera, a camera manufacturer would just be like, hey, we got a new camera coming out. You want to check it out? And like suddenly that's the priority. We just aren't totally in control of our own schedule. And then, you know, after a month passes, it's like you've forgotten about it. Yeah, or it's not it's like like relevant or something. It's so yeah. it's... I'm very sorry. I know I do that all the time. I don't do it intentionally. I'm not I get trying bored. to string you along. I do it because I get bored. I'll be like, I'm going to do this, and I'll think about it, and I'll be like, mm. all right, what's this one? From Unstanic, why don't smartphone manufacturers get into the camera business? And this is an interesting question because Samsung did this. They were yeah. manufacturing smartphones, and they made the NX lineup of cameras that was great, and it was getting better and better. And then they completely quit the camera industry. And they did that because they looked into the future and they saw that camera sales were declining and that it was inevitably going to be an unprofitable business. And it's, it's that, it's simple. It's like, it's a shrinking industry. Why would you yeah. jump into that? Now, Apple is very open to getting into completely random industries. Like rumors, are, rumors have it that they're gonna be making electric self-driving cars and launching it in 2024 and I totally believe that rumor because that's a rapidly growing industry even though it has almost no overlap with what they do now they can make money at that but are they going to get in there and fight for a sh increasingly shrinking pie with Canon and Nikon and Sony like no they're smarter than that yeah that makes sense I mean the industry is not getting bigger so uh, Professor David Pendergast you're going to the International Space Station. Your baggage allowance is restricted to one camera body and one lens. What are your tools of choice? Now, 
I think we're going to be going together so we could share. Because <laughs> I, because I think like we're going to need a telephoto because we're going to want those sweet earth pictures, but we're going to want wide angle as well. Mm -hmm. And so like one of us could bring wide angle, one of us could bring telephoto, we could share. I feel like you've totally cheated the question by trying to make it two lenses. I mean, why not just get like a super zoom or something? Super zooms. My thing is, I don't know what focal length I would need because I, I know the space station is actually like really close to Earth. So do you need like a 12 millimeter? I, I don't know how far away. It's not like oh. it's in deep space or something. Like, I, I don't oh. know. If you got a telephoto, you'd be like looking really... I'm trying to spy on people. Yeah. No, I don't know then. Hmm. I would bring an R5 and a 15 to 35 F2.8. I would Easy. bring my least favorite camera and I would boot it right out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being really mean today. <laughs> I just want to be inflammatory. Okay, Tom says, um, how can you tell when you've outgrown your current equipment? People always think it, they, their pictures need to reach a certain level of yeah. quality and then they'll be ready to upgrade. But I just think it's more when is your camera equipment getting in the way? Like if you're a wildlife photographer and you miss some important shot because the autofocus system wasn't there, then it's time. Yeah. And if your camera equipment's not getting in the way, then just keep using the camera hmm. equipment. I mean, why are people trying to justify, why do they always have to justify buying camera gear if it's just fun anyway? Like when it's a hobby, people are like, can I justify it? No, never. It's never going to be a good investment. It's just fun. Just buy whatever you want. Yeah, or whatever hobbies you can. cost you money. Yeah. That's what it is. So have fun with it. Okay, in a few minutes, we're going to answer how we met Ooh. along with some other provocative questions. But first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. What a teaser. <laughs> No matter what type of website you need, Squarespace is the perfect place to do it. Your social media just isn't good enough to represent you on the web. It's filled with ads and cluttered and somebody could take it away at any moment. Get your own domain name, your own personalized email addresses and a website that matches your sense of style. Works great on every format, computers, tablets, laptops, smartphones, whatever. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Just try it out. Set it up. I promise in 10 minutes you'll have a working beautiful website and when you love it use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. And it's in the link down below in the description. <laughs> and do it. Just do it. Thank you Squarespace. Virtual Pilot asks, how did you and Chelsea meet? Yahoo Personals. And I didn't show a picture and I said I had the body of Philip Seymour Hoffman. And Tony was into that. <laughs> um, I had been trying online dating, and even then, it was abysmal. Yeah. Like, I was in the Massachusetts area, and it seemed like every picture, some girl would just, like, show her face and then be like, uh, I love the Red Sox. If you want to know more, message me. They, <laughs> Sounds awesome, actually. They were just boring and humorless. And, yeah. like, my type is funny. Like, that's Psycho. what I like in a woman yeah and your picture your profile had no picture yeah which if you look at online dating like what does it mean when somebody has no they're hot <laughs> that's not usually how it goes <laughs> but you were funny yeah funny. your profile was funny you had actually written something other than you like red socks and and hiking always hiking even though they don't have a single hiking spot i still have some bitterness from like yeah you do these, these fake hikers <laughs> i just i went on there for a friend who was divorced and you could put in anything. You could be like, what do they like? Like, it was just like this whole thing. I was like, I'm going to try this and see what happens. And also, I was very, very broke, so I didn't pay for the dating site. And I saw Tony, and like, I almost didn't message him because he was wearing, um, like, headphones in the picture. And I was like, I don't know, as if this guy thinks he's cool. But he could write <laughs> full sentences. And uh, you were also very funny. I remember you said you had the musical taste of like a 16 year old. And um, so I sent him like, a, I think it was called a poke. A wink. A wink because uh, I didn't pay for that. And then. Yeah, it was the only thing you could do for if you didn't have a paid account. Because <laughs> finding your soulmate isn't worth a $4.99 a month. I had no money <laughs> at the time, you know. Okay. But I found my soulmate for free, and that's a freaking bargain. <laughs> okay, what does Muhammad Farouk say? Hi, Tony. How do you make money uh, from taking landscape photos? I, it's not like it used to be. 
like it, it was always hard to make money with landscape but yeah. before you could really sell calendars and that's kind of disappeared and nowadays landscape photographers seem to make money by well a lot of them have YouTube channels this is the way a lot of photographers monetize their craft or they do workshops um, your only other option if you actually want to sell fine art prints is you could go to a touristy area and have really the best pictures of that area that is possible but really you need to develop yourself as a brand. You need, to, you know, you can name Ansel Adams and yeah. everybody can. Not because his work was necessarily the best. You could find lots of photographers with very similar, even better work because he made a name for himself and people want his work. It's not just about the picture. It's about you, the photographer. It's about the story of taking the pictures. It's true. You need your own story. It's a part of it. Joshua Murray asks, what's your favorite dinosaur? You said Triceratops, right? Yeah, Triceratops, the best dinosaur, three horns. I don't really know. Some dinosaurs are fake now, which I find upsetting. I, for years, I thought the Triceratops was fake until today I went back and looked it up again. Tri they said Triceratops was fake, and then they were like, no, no, it's not fake. Triceratops was real. Is Allosaurus real? I, I don't know. Could it eat the Triceratops? Because I'm going to choose that. No, because the Triceratops pokey. It's got pokey horns that would keep it from eating it. Triceratops, vegetarian, but very pokey. You know what? The Triceratops is really just a rhinoceros with a frilly collar. Allosaurus. How dare you? <laughs> if it's Allos over. If Allosaurus <laughs> is still real, Allosaurus will kill your dinosaur. <laughs> Ken Mitchell. Of the various camera brands, which brands fanboys or fangirls leave the meanest comments after you and say some after you say something they don't like? A list in order of number of degrees Celsius of hate could be fun to read. Um, this used this is like changed, I think, because it used to be Pentax, but not so much. Yeah, when we first met Chris and Jordan from now from DP Review TV. Within an hour and a half, I think this is the discussion we were having. Yeah. And the answer was Pentax. And then for a while, it was Fuji. And um, nowadays, it's been like it was Nikon for a long time. Like since the Z series launch, it was Nikon. And then I found in the last month or so, it's been Sony on our YouTube channel. Well, I just got rid of my Sony, but then I like did not read a single comment. I was like, it's with you now. <laughs> I'm out of here. Oh, they're mad. Oh. And so I don't think there is one brand, but I think they all have something in common. It's the brand that used to be the top tech leading brand, but has now fallen behind the competition. Yeah. Because these people feel a little slighted. Like they want to believe they still have the best tech, even though some other camera company pulled ahead. Do you ever care? Like, is there a single brand that you actually don't like? Oh, I don't care about the brands at all. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't want to use a Pentax, though. No, like... <laughs> Clunky things. I know. I'm like a camera sociopath. Like, I have no emotional attachment to cameras at all. That's why I just change brands whenever I want. I, I don't know, care. I know. People get so upset. They're like, how could you leave it? I'm like, because it's an inanimate object. Yeah, it's not a puppy. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> uh, how, do you, how do you deal with the negative comments on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram? They say you can't always ignore it, but... I found that not to be true. <laughs> I, that might even be the best way is to simply ignore it. Do you think you should ignore it? Because like I said about the Ken Rockwell thing, like he's super smart, very knowledgeable, uh, gives away information for free, and then he did completely ignore it, and now like people are still so rude to him. Do you think if he had tried to clear it up or had interjected at some point, he could have undone that bad press? Or do you think once it's there, it's just there? I haven't had any success fighting back against people. It doesn't seem to make any difference. It just, I, but at the same time, they say ignore them and they go away. That's not true. No, they don't. Ignore go them away. and they just keep going forever. Yeah. Fight against them, they keep going forever. You just don't really have any control over it. So you can just let it go. I think all you can do is ignore it and just keep trying to produce content. And that's what Ken Rockwell has done. He has just continued to have like, one of the most successful websites. And as far as I know, he still just makes a living doing what he's doing, not yeah. caring at all what people are saying. He's so him. happy. Maybe he needs to write a book for all the other content creators. How to be Ken Rockwell level happy. Uh, okay. 
Phil Photo Gear Fun asks, from sexiest tech geek to camera geek, I know you've touched on this, but could you walk us through the evolution? You do that. You, sexiest geek was from your time at like Genuity BBN and like someone entered you in this competition, right? Yeah, so I, I graduated high school in 92 and then I went into the tech world because yeah. I was just a nerd. And that moved me up into the Boston area where I started working for the company that invented the router, the BBN. The and BBN. The BBN, I don't know why I said that. Bolt, Bernack, and Newman. And I quickly became one of the top nerds there, doing like web architecture, high level stuff. Black Rocket? And our company had the biggest tech IPO ever at the time. It's still the second biggest ever. And then within six months, we were bankrupt. <laughs> I was going to be set for life off the options I was getting because I was a like director level. And then it all just disappeared overnight. So Did I you cry. I don't. I don't know, probably. And so I just said, okay, you know what? I like writing. I'm just going to write books about computers. So I wrote books mostly for Microsoft Press. And I was able to make a good living authoring these books. I moved out into the wilderness and really got heavily into photography. I've been taking pictures this whole time with my cameras, but it was just a hobby. And um, so then I made Northrop.org, which just had lots of pictures, mostly of wildlife. It was like a stock site. Yeah, ex exactly. You could buy pictures, but it also had advertising on it, and that made money. And then uh, I met you, and something at the same time happened. People stopped buying books for technical stuff because they could get it all online. Yeah. Like all that content started to become free, and so making a living at it became harder. And so I said, well, people still buy photography books, and I love photography. Let's write a photography book. Yeah. Well, first we did stock photography together. Yeah. And that was when I really fell in love with it because I had done it just as a hobby. But I loved constructing the sets and things like that and doing storytelling, which was so cheesy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's what got us into it together. What a story. It starts in 1992, and then I moved into the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> Lakshmi, also, do you now include the M1 Max into your workflow? This is the, the new MacBook Pro that has a different type of chip. Yeah. And I found it to be incredibly fast for especially for video editing and I am not using it. After I was considering it, I hooked it up, I was using it day to day, but it's still missing too much. There's too many bugs. I, there's like drivers that are missing that I need like there's not a driver for, for my label printer, so I couldn't print labels. So I was going to have to use another computer for that. And so I was just like, no, I'll revisit it in a couple of months. And that's why it's now on camera because it's just been relegated to the studio. Kevin, what is the biggest obstacle each of you has had to overcome as a photographer? Uh, mine is perfectionism. I would just never post a photo. It's never good enough. And I just keep trying to redo, 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 redo. And then finally I realize you just have to make mistakes and move on from them and grow. Uh, mine is my shyness. I'm still like the shy, awkward little nerd at heart. Yeah. And it hold me, held me back a lot. And part of why I got into wildlife photography, of all things, because the animals... They don't know. judge you. Right. But uh, even for something like landscape photography, if I'd show up to a place and there'd be a bunch of people trying to take the same picture, I wouldn't want to be in somebody else's way. Yeah. Um, and certainly something like portrait photography or street photography was just way too intrusive, and I just avoided it. So I had to overcome that. And I've gotten into all those things now and love them, but... One of our left out questions was why we don't collaborate with our YouTube videos more. And I think that's why we both are just like shy with other people. Yeah. We've done a few when people approach us, but I'm j I would never reach out. I don't think I've ever reached out to ask for a favor from a bigger YouTuber or something. No, I can't, I think of anything can't like that. imagine I that. imposing myself and asking someone for yeah. their time. Um, give us more info about your hair. Were you born white haired or something? <laughs> um, my mom. It definitely comes from her because yeah. she started going gray when she was 16, according to her. Um, for me, it was more like 2021 20, when I started really seeing substantial amounts of, of white hair. But it, I actually think it helped my career, what I was talking about when I was a nerd at the BBN, because I was a kid going in there, you yeah. know? And I started working there when I think I was like 22 or 23, but my white hair made me look like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> it's always helped me out a little bit. It's been infuriating for me to watch your white hair steer you through life because I remember I got you a NASA shirt from The Gap 
and like people were insisting you worked at NASA. And I'm like, that doesn't happen to me. I actually have a career as a photographer and people question me. You wear a NASA shirt and you work at NASA. I'm like, that white hair is amazing. It, it is funny how what people project on me just based on my hair. Like for Halloween, I dressed up as a doctor. Somebody cut their hand. And no, they, they say, got hit in the head with a football. Okay. But they came to me and said, oh, we need help. This person's been injured. And I said, I am not a doctor. It's Halloween. <laughs> and, but they just kept insisting that I must have medical Can knowledge. please help? <laughs> it's no. just, it was, it's really, I know it is, just my hair. <laughs> Dang. Dale Harrison, um, what would you say is the key to keeping inspired and motivated? Well, for photography, for me, I never get tired of it because I've learned how to enjoy it on a very basic level. I think I got... Um, a little spooked away from it when I felt like every shot had to be portfolio worthy and then when I realized there's something to just enjoying it and shooting and allowing yourself to just grow incrementally um, it's really more about the journey I know that sounds really corny but that just keeps me shooting all the time when it comes to YouTube I don't have the answer to that yet <laughs> how about you uh, no I just wanted to hear your answer because 2020 is it's it's really it's crushed my motivation. What I've realized is that I got so much of my inspiration from Travel. traveling to new places and 2020 has taken that away and as a result I have I've been lacking this inspiration and motivation. It's been really hard for me. I'm sorry. Let's go out shooting today and I'll show you my way. <laughs> okay, please. Victor, without making excuses for simple bad technique, are we crushed under the tyranny of sharpness for its own sake because technology makes unprecedented degrees of sharpness possible and for some reason sparks obsession with sharpness out of proportion to, to other aspects of photography? Um, uh, we might be overusing the word tyranny here. <laughs> possible. I mean, I understand why people get obsessed with sharpness because it's something that you have to kind of learn. It's a part of the process of learning photography. A lot of people don't understand shutter speed at first and then they don't understand why their photos aren't sharp or they spend a lot of money on a camera and they don't understand why their photos aren't sharp. And so it seems like something everyone has to master and so that might be why it seems to you people are hung up on it. From a reviewer's perspective, um, this is what cameras are marketing with their lenses and their cameras, more resolution and more sharpness. And so we're testing what they're promising. And so sharpness is not the end all be all. Storytelling, of course, is important. Um, but yeah, it's pretty important. And it's what cameras promise. So I do see this effect where people will watch a video on sharpness and then they think that in the, that that's all we've ever done is talk about sharpness. Yeah. It's like, no, no, you just watch the one video about sharpness, but we do more than that. Well, you know, it's interesting. If we do a video about something like sharpness or something more technical, people will say like, that's not the only thing about photography. And we'll say, correct. Watch our art and science series or watch our video on composition or watch our video on like timing and times of day. And those videos bomb. No one wants to watch those. Those are <laughs> yeah. not sexy. We have a video. We have so, so many videos. And like, I think we got an email this morning. I woke up to it. I'm so disappointed in you guys. You never make technique videos anymore. But we do. Yeah, People I don't watch my them. Boca video like three days yeah, ago or yeah. something. And it bombed. It yeah. just completely bombed. Yeah. And that's okay. I'll make videos knowing they'll bomb because I know some people will watch them and enjoy them. But, um, that's what people are interested in. I don't know why. It's, I know it's not the only part of photography, but people like it. Gregory Derrick asks, Merry Christmas, guys. Do you ever just take a compact camera when you travel, or is it always the professional gear? If I'm going on a trip, I'm bringing a professional camera, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I often decide my smartphone's good enough. Like, if I don't think I'm going to get a portfolio shot and mm -hmm. I don't need a telephoto lens, then a, a smartphone's fine, even at night. Light, night shot's great. With I get disappointed. If I get a nice shot with my phone, I'll think, oh, then I wish I had my real camera on me because, you know, that's, I painstakingly pick out my camera and then I don't bring it sometimes and I get frustrated. On a trip, to answer your question, um, I always bring my professional camera, but I always bring a compact option. So if we're just going to dinner or something, I'll bring the really compact option and uh, I don't want to stop too much and make my kid crazy because it's not like I'm going to get a snapshot that's going to be the best of my life. I'm going to have yeah. to stick around for like a half hour. And so, you know, whatever. Alephoto asks, uh, why do some people look better when they use a mask? 
I've thought about this. You have. That's why I wanted to include this. Uh, some people look better with sunglasses too, right? And then they take them off and you're like, oh, you look different than I thought. And I have a theory that it's because you imagine the average underneath the mask. So when you see someone with a mask on, you're not imagining that they have one crooked tooth or maybe a crooked nose or a broken nose. You're just imagining like the default average. And then when they take off their mask and it's something different, then I think that you're like, oh, I just imagined something better there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Francis Leader asks, have there ever been times when either of you hated photography and did you ever think of giving up? I've never hated photography of you. No, I have never hated photography, nor have I, nor have I ever thought about Me giving either. it up. I can't even imagine just n like ever not doing it. It doesn't have to be intense all the time. It doesn't have to be a pro shoot all the time. But every single day when I'm just looking at something, I'm thinking of integrating it into a photo or um, loving the light or imagining, you know, what I could do with it in a picture or as a background. I really, truly, truly love it and will never not take photos. But most people do. It's a, a transitional hobby for people. They, they get into it for six months or a year and then they move on to something else. I've talked to a million people like this, but not me, man. I've been in it for more than 20 years now and I lament I can't travel. I lament I can't go to the Saharas of Africa to take pictures, but I never think, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, but I think we're pretty chill about it. Like, I remember you put up just a family snapshot of, like, Sandy or something on Instagram, and people were like, I expect more from you, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I think that's a reason that we still love it is because we're not always holding ourselves to an impossible standard. I'll put up a mediocre picture. I'll know it's mediocre, but I was there, and I took it, and I liked it, and it's not going in my portfolio, but I enjoy it. Yeah, if you have to constantly outdo yourself, eventually you are going to You're going to burn that. out, right? All right. Is that it? That's, that's all the questions, yeah. Okay, so to sum it up, we're gonna try to do something like our live show again. Um, yeah, follow us on social media. We'll post it in the coming days because I really want to get it out like before the end of the year or right at the beginning of January. Okay, thank you so much for the wonderful year uh, and for all of your questions, for putting the time in to ask them and for making our jobs fun, right? Yeah, happy new year everybody and we'll see you in 2021. Come. Oh yeah, and thank you Squarespace for making this entire podcast possible. And if you want your own website, your own store, your own portfolio, or a website for your business, you can get it for free for 14 days, no credit card needed. Just try it out and see if you like it. We really do like it. We have several uh, websites with Squarespace. And if you decide that you'd like to go live with it and show it to other people, you can use the coupon code CHELSEA to get 10% off. Go into the description down below and click on the link. Thanks, Squarespace, and Happy New Year, everybody.